welcome to today's cichlids and coffee. I hope you're having a great cup wherever you are. And uh, welcome to everybody that's here already and some of you early birds that arrived a while back. And let's see here who we have. Big welcome here to Country Strong and Free and Metzikali Fish Keeper. Z-Zip is in the house. Vibes Aquatics, hey buddy. Let's see here, JD is in the house. Medco 74, good morning to you as well. Jeff Hester, all right. Yes, 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 Jeff, we're here. We're here, Jeff. Now give me a sound check and a video check, somebody. That'd be great. Hey, Angelo. Good to see you. Sunder India in the house. Good to see you, my friend. And uh, let's see here. Angelo, I think. Did I say Angelo already? Anyway, welcome everybody to today's live stream. And uh, Dominique, 4 a.m. coffee for me. Wow, Dominic, you are an early riser. My wife had to get up early this morning to take my um, son and mother-in-law to the airport at about 4 a.m. So... Uh, <laughs> Usually I do it, but I didn't want to today because of the live stream. I had a lot of work to do to set it up. Cichlid Kings in the house, salient. Aquatics, these are, um, and Jerry Martin, Jerry's Fish Room. These are moderators, and they help me to keep things moving along, along with GP, Gurvinder. Ozzy the Oscar. Hello, Ozzy. Good to see you. And... Matt Braun, 6 p.m. here. Wow. We are all over the world today. All over the world. David Neary in the house. Just got my Frontosa colony started. I am really excited. Frontosas are awesome. Like that fish. Very mellow. Very pretty fish. And uh, looks like Denny has got his uh, tank. Not only does Dennis Rudell, Denny, one of our moderators, have his tank up and running, but he's got fry already so that's a good sign there denny that's awesome okay vibes aquatic cichlid kings all right good group we have a few things to talk about today let's go ahead and uh let's do the official uh start uh, the official start of the live stream <laughs> Big shout out to my moderators who really helped me to keep things on track. And also a um, Robert Egan, I'm in the casa. <laughs> and also a big shout out, of course, to uh, the Cichlid Shack, a sponsor of the channel. Every fish you see here, every fish behind me here is a shack fish. And uh, we'll be doing shack's choice in a little bit here. Don't forget anything you get from the shack. Uh, we're still gonna keep this one in place. It's so popular. I'm not sure when we're going to expire it, but it can expire at any time. 15% off on Shack Attack 15. Use the code Shack Attack 15. And for fish orders over $100. And Shack Attack 10, if you wanna buy food, like Extreme, things like that, or Prime, or you know other products that he sells. And so, um, don't forget those discounts. And let's see here. Also, a big shout out to those of you who are members of the Garage Gang, my monthly, my monthly Patreon supporters. Big shout out to all of you. Without you, a lot of my projects would just not be possible. Including uh, going to Aquashella. And that will be in November. Looks like they've moved Aquashella to Daytona, Florida. Uh, I think it's the first weekend or second weekend of November. And so that is where I will be going this year. So um, I'd, I'd like to meet all of you face to face. Just come on over to the, I, I'll be walking around filming and I'll be over at the YouTube table at Aquashella in Florida, in Daytona in November. And a big shout out to my Patreons who really help to fund trips like that so yes indeed so let's um let's do just very quickly here let's just do the uh, let's do shack's choice and these are uh fish that each week 
are are handpicked by uh, by James Largo over at the Cichlid Shack, and uh, let's see here. Let's see what we have coming up. First of all, let's see. We have this beautiful beast and this. Let's see. Is a F1. Now, F1 means that it is the offspring of fish that were taken directly from Lake Malawi. So this is an F1. And it looks like Hemi, t uh, Hemi tilapia. Oxyrhynchus, Oxyrhynchus, and uh, let's just call it the giant hap. So that's uh, that's one of the fish there that are available at Shack's Choice, and we also have uh, one of my favorites. This is called the Imperial uh, Stavinci Imperial Tigris Blue Gold. Just an absolutely gorgeous fish, and. Um, this one's available at five inches for $59.99. Just look at the markings on that fish. Just a beautiful fish. One of my favorites. The blue gold combination to me is one of the prettiest among, among African cichlids. And uh, we also have, there is also an OB. Check out this guy. Look at the orange and blue and the uh, spots and stripes on the tail on this guy and on the fins, the egg spots. This is a Skittles line. This is a line that is being bred directly by the uh, Cichlid Shack. This one's f uh, four, uh, five to six inches, $69.99. So um, those are Shack's choice. There's a lot more going on there and a lot more fish that are going to be posted. You can see here in uh, what's coming up. You can take a look at some of these fish, see if there's something on there that you've been wanting to get. And uh, be sure that the order goes over 100, and uh, you can pick which discount you want to use. You can get the flat rate 50 for shipping, or or uh, up to 50 pounds, or you can get the um, uh, shock attack 15. So you can still use either one of those. And if you use Southwest uh, Airport to Airport, be sure that the airport is available. Though your closest airport is uh, one that that Southwest delivers to. Otherwise, you might have a long drive. You can also choose Federal Express as an option, even though uh, I think the preferred route is, uh, the preferred way is using Southwest Airlines. Okay. Big shout out there to the CHAC for all their support of the channel. So, <clears throat> I've got some great stuff today. I've got a... Um, I've got a, a video for you that I'm going to narrate, and I have a a, a video that I uh, that I that I filmed from a trip to the local fish store, and and I have a question for you, a question about a possible fish, and I want you folks to help me out with this. And <clears throat> I have, uh, but first, let's uh, let's get into this this big reveal and uh, I'm looking at it from here and I'm, I'm, I'm just loving it. I'm loving looking at it. I'm loving, I'm just enjoying the heck out of it. I am going to be releasing a very detailed video on all the steps that were taken to, uh, to bring this aquarium around and it's not entirely completely done. And I'll share with you what I mean by that in a minute, but it's, uh, it's actually very, very close. So let, let's, let's, uh, Let's go ahead and, and jump into that. And this is uh, what I call the uh, big, the big, big reveal uh, video. So let's start off just to give you a tour of the entire fish room. We'll just run one lap of the room here. And uh, these are the rasboras that I picked up here locally and they are just doing uh, fantastic and they're they're ready to go into the uh, into the 55 gallon and that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put them in the into the brand new upgrade that you're gonna see here in a minute and that's where they're going to end up but 
I just love the way they school, love the way they look. And as you know, for those of you that follow the channel, you know that that was my first, my first fish. This is the, um, there's still a couple egg bears and uh, egg layers in there, but this is, this is technically my live bear, uh, 20 gallon tall rimless tank from uh, glass cages. And they're doing great. They, they, they keep spawning and having little, little babies like you can see there. And a lot of them I think just get, just get eaten up. But uh, they're, they're, they're doing great. I might throw a couple guppies in there, maybe a male and a couple females. Have a couple little quarries that I'm growing out and I'll be putting them into the 55 as well. But one of them is a, a picus, a, a spotted quarry, just really pretty. You can see them on the top of the rock there. I've got some floating Sprite. I really like this stuff because you can just let it float around and it just roots and, and lives fine. It doesn't need to be in the substrate. This liar tail is still living in isolation. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, um, I'm gonna get three females and put three females in there and uh, just let them go to town and then probably m move them all over. Maybe move the male out first if the females do get uh, start to hold, and uh, maybe maybe raise up some some fry in that little in that little aqua top five gallon tank. I'm really loving those uh, aquarium co-op heaters. By the way, I have them installed in more of my tanks now. You'll see them as we as we go along. Uh, but this little guy is uh, is is just doing well. The only reason the only reason I haven't moved him over to the 20 gallon tall is because I'm afraid he's gonna munch up, you know, eat up those little guys. Here's the 300 and the 300 is looking good. And you'll notice as we look at the fish, you'll notice that the, the Buchachromis Rhodesia yellow has been returned to this tank. He was in isolation, he was in solitaire because he was uh, just being a jerk. There he is. He's, he's just a stud. And I, uh, I wanted to, um, I wanted to keep him. So I was hoping that he would, he would calm down and I put him back in and he's fine. He's fine. He's leaving the uh, autopharynx tetrastigma alone that you can see right there. And I, you know, I'm not a believer in timeouts. I don't think that the timeout changed the um, the Buchachromis much. I don't think it changed him as much as it allowed the autopharynx tetrastigma to become more acclimated, more comfortable. Eye biters are just freak fish. I mean, I just think they're freaks, but they're kind of pretty in a way, right? That trout is just crazy. But as you can see, they're looking great. And uh, hopefully the, uh, the Buchachromos will not attack anybody while we're on the live stream today and make a liar out of me. Look at that sand diver. He's just blowing up. And again, all these fish are from the shack. Here's my little miracle uh, Bicolor 500 who... who uh, somehow can hang with these guys and the Taiwan Reef. So this 300 gallon tank is working out well. There's a uh, Lethronops oculatus, another kind of a miracle fish that really shouldn't be able to hang with fish with this level of aggression, but he does. Over to the 210 gallon. This vieja is just turning into a monster. And I don't mean mean, I mean just just ginormous. It's just a big, just a big giant beast. Just kind, just kind of hangs around and I'm sure the Oscars will catch up to him in size, but, and eventually surpass him. But, but for right now, he is just the, uh, the giant of the tank. He's got to be up around 10 inches or more. 
very, very thick. Beautiful colors, a lot of pink in the body. That deep blue and black in the fins. A couple chocolate cichlids in there. You usually don't get to see them, they're usually hiding, but there's one of them back there. And of course, there's, there's Sal. It's actually a female. If you get a Salvini, be sure to get a female, get that red belly. Oscars are just doing great. The albino Oscar put on a little more size, doesn't look as dwarfed as before. There's another one of the little chocolates. I love this fire mouth. Look at him, coming to attack me. He really thinks he's a he, he's a he's a bad dude. He um, he's gotten into so many lip locks with uh, with other fish that I think his I think his jaw is a little out of whack now. The Nicaragua, beautiful colors on her. See that instantly, the Nicaragua. But now that now that look at that, the Jack Dempsey's going after the Nicaragua. So the Nicaragua has now moved to the bottom of the pecking order. Looks like the fire mouth has moved up a little bit. Nobody messes with the Jack Dempsey. This tank, of course, is empty because I moved the uh, fish out. And give me a drum roll because here is the big reveal. This is the 55-gallon community tank. And I added some, um, some special substrate that is... Uh, designed for planted tanks on the outsides because I didn't want to plant directly into sand. I've got some floating Sprite in there. I have some Crips. I have some Amazon Swords. I have some uh, Jungle Val, some Sprite that's planted, some Sprite that's floating. And I have um, a couple types of Anubias that I didn't glue into the wood, but I actually was able to wedge into slots the um, filtration is now being provided by that hang-on hang back filter instead of, these, instead of these internal filters. This is what it looked like before. So you can get an idea. See that large heater is now out of there. That internal filter is out of there. That artificial plant was taken out. And of course, this, this internal filter was also taken out. So you can see what it looked like before and what it looks like now. I've got some root tabs in there. I've put a little bit of easy green, a couple shots of easy green. A big shout out to the aquarium co-op for providing the uh, root tabs, the easy green and the plants and the heaters. They also sent me a 48 inch uh, LED light that is a uh, specific for plants, but I'm going to be um, adding to this tank. It's not on there now. I still have the beams work on this tank. So there you go. Any tips, any comments, any suggestions that you have about what you think I should do with this, let me know. Anything you think I should add. The jungle val, of course, is going to grow very tall, and and uh, and hopefully the floating sprite will start to uh, fill in a little bit more at the top. The Anubias will stay around that size. It's uh, more of a petite variety. The swords will put on some size. The crip will grow a little bit. Some of the sprite will get larger. You see some of the floating uh, sprite floats down and gets stuck in the plants. But overall, I'm really happy with it. Any tips you might have, let me know. I will be adding the rasboras. I'll be adding the rasboras to it, and I'll be adding some quarries. Uh, the two quarries that are in the, um, in the live bear tank and the five rasboras will be added. I'll probably do that this weekend, which will be awesome because we'll have those schooling rasboras in there too. And um, I like it. I like it a lot. So just let me know what you think. Let me know any other tips, any other fish you think I should add to it. 
uh, that you think are missing. I've got uh, lemons in there. I have Buenos Aires tetras that somebody told me might eat the plants. We'll see. Red serpas, right? I've got the uh, rummy nose, five rummy nose in there. And uh, so it, it's, a, it's a nice collection of fish. And for a 55, I don't want to overcrowd it. At the same time, I think, um, I think I could put some more fish in there, a fish of this size. That uh, Marineland 400 moves a lot of water. And of course, the plants are doing a lot of the work as well. So, so what do you think? Let me know what you think, and uh, we'll go from there. We have, um, I'm going to be releasing, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be releasing a, lar a longer video that goes into the entire process from uh, swapping out the heaters, adding the, the substrate, the new substrate, the plants. Um, the entire process um, is, is going to be uh, covered in a more detailed video on how I made the transition to the... Um, to live plants and so we'll take a look at it we'll, we'll you'll be able to see it in more detail later so gp av is great okay good good i know somebody i i, I didn't i didn't see the a, the uh, audio visual uh, comment but i assumed if it wasn't working you folks would be screaming at me let's see here Country, strong, and free should make the kids go dig a ditch today just to keep them out of my head. <laughs> Daniel says, I'm loud and clear. Thank you, my friend. Matt, 6 p.m. here. Let me see. I'm going through the, I'm going through the chat right now. Let's see. Real quick. Thank you for sharing that uh, Cichlichak, um link there, Jerry. Appreciate that. Uh, Fishman Marcus in the house. Hello, buddy. Ken A J D K. I get, hit that thumbs up. I guess he's saying there. And Vibes Aquatics. Let's see here. Salient Jerry. It sounds like you lost a discus. I hate to hear that. You get so attached to those guys, and they're so pretty, and they're so expensive. So when you lose a discus, it kind of hurts you. It hurts you in in different places. So let's see here, Jay. Picked up 10 baby silver angelfish. Very, very cool. I'm going to talk about angelfish in a minute. You're going to see, uh, you're going to see something in a minute. It's going to talk about angelfish. All right. Let's see here. Going through the chat. GP. I just got a young three to four inch of Venusis. Very beautiful. Fire Uganda Hap from Lake Victoria. Wow. Are you keeping them in the same tank? That'd be interesting. Surprisingly, those uh, Lake Vic and the Tanganyikans could be really, really aggressive. But uh, Venusa should be able to hold his own. I love Venusa. You know that. The one I have in here is, uh, is just a real specimen. If I can get, get him to come over. There he is. He's got that beautiful yellow-orange blaze. Wonderful markings on the body. Just a great, just a great-looking fish. Billy D in the house. Hey, Billy D. James says, that's one from last week, Ben. Did you sell it? If you didn't sell it. <laughs> if you sold it, that's good. Vibes Aquatics. Hey, hey, Vibes. Pushing for the thumbs up. I appreciate that. All right. I've got another video for you. A short video. I took a trip to uh, my my local fish store, and I want to show you what I saw. Peas and haps forever. My spectabilis is running about seven inches. Spectabilis, I think, are one of the most underrated African cichlids. I mean, they're just, I just think they're beautiful. One in here somewhere. Anyway, I just think they're really pretty fish. All right, so it looks like you folks approve of the, uh, of the new planted tank from the comments I'm seeing. I appreciate that. Anything that you want to add, let me know. And uh, hey, Vibes, thank you for that uh, super chat. I appreciate it. Super chat is a way you can support the channel uh, down in the comment section. You can also um, 
visit my Amazon store. Maybe someone will share the link for the Amazon store and also the uh, Teespring where you can pick up coffee mugs and t-shirts. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sh share with you a, uh, a short video of a trip I took to, a lo to my local fish, fish store here. And, uh, and it was kind of cool. Now, I hope it doesn't get glitchy because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to pull it I'm going to pull it off the internet, off of YouTube, and so hopefully it'll work. And then at the end of the video, I have a question for you about a possible new fish, and I want I want to get your your comment on it. But let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and just show you this video. I was in the area, so I stopped by my local fish store, the Aquatic Critter, and uh, boy, did they have some nice fish today including these um, beautiful, beautiful tetras, Congo tetras, along with, uh, along with some real nice koi angelfish, my favorite type of angelfish. In the same tank, they had these beautiful stingrays. I've never seen stingrays for sale here at the Aquatic Critter. They have their uh, house stingrays that I'll show you in a second. But this pair was uh, going for about 800 bucks with no warranty because apparently they are sensitive and it was uh hey you buy it and it's yours so you take your chances but boy they're pretty 800 bucks is a little little high for my budget imagine what these beasts must cost these are their uh, resident resident rays and uh they've been here every time i've come here can you imagine what one of these would sell for them? They're about four feet across, and they're kept in this um, beautiful pond enclosure. They also had some rope fish. I haven't seen rope fish before. Really cool looking guys. They get up to two feet long. Really nice. Just wondering where I could possibly put one. would be a real interesting addition to the aquarium. Very, very cute. They also had a tank with um, dwarf pikes. Here's some green, green dwarf pikes. This is a male here with the more prominent bands. Get about two to four inches in length. Really cool. I've never seen dwarf pikes before either. This spotted Pictus catfish has always been of interest to me, as well as those Junipari geophagus in the background there. I love the long whiskers. Wouldn't mind adding one of those, but the truth is they're a little bit hyper, and I think I would prefer some of these black fin, black fin sharks, this type of a variety of catfish. I just think they look really, really cool. They seem to have a more mellow temperament love the um, love the fins on them thank you for watching and uh, be sure to hit that uh, the thumbs up and subscribe and the bell i appreciate that and what do you think do you think i should get a uh, a rope fish i think they'd look pretty cool in that 90 gallon aquarium we can talk about it on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. I hope to see you there. Bye-bye. What do you think about that rope fish? Do any of you have a, a, any kind of experience with rope fish? And I mean, I think I a two foot long, two foot long, but I know, they, I, I know they'd wrap around stuff. They'd go, I mean, it's not like one of these guys that will be two, you know, that would be 24 inches. It'd be real different. So maybe in the 90 gallon, uh, I mean, what do you think? Do you have any experience with a rope fish? And uh, do you think you think a rope fish would be uh, something I could add to the setup here? What do you think? Let me know. Michael likes the the, the black fin cats. I, I like those black fin cats. Do you know how big do they do they get really large? I mean I don't want to end up with like a red tail catfish. Uh, 
do you know how big those those I mean I could I guess I could google it but if you know off the top of your head I'd love to know but the uh, yeah those those black fin catfish I think are really cute the way their faces are are lined up and they're not as hyper they just kind of they kind of cruise around and uh, I think that one of those could go into into the 90 very easily and be left alone by the other fish and uh, but that rope fish, I thought that rope fish was just so cute. It almost looks like they're smiling when they're, when they're sitting there. And uh, so let me know in the comments what you think. I think they still have them. I think 24 bucks seems like a fair price. I mean, the aquatic critter is not an inexpensive fish store. It, it tends to be on the high side when it comes to prices. But 24 bucks for a, for a rope fish doesn't, doesn't seem that bad. Uh, Zzip says rope fish will jump. Lower water levels to be safe. Yes, yeah, about an inch and a half uh, and, a, and, a, and a hard uh, plexi cover on the 90. But I have had fish get out of the corners on the 90. I found one of the large, uh, one of the large geos on the floor was able to catch him before he got too damaged. But yeah, if they're jumpers, that's something to consider, something to be aware of. So, Michael, you don't know how big they get. Okay. Oh, 9 to 10 inches. Okay. St. Dust, black fins get 9 to 10 inches. That's a good-sized cat. That's a good-sized catfish. That'd be actually very pretty. That'd be very pretty when he gets that, that size. And at that point, I wonder if he'd be able to hang with these guys. I know you can get some good-sized synodonis. And they get left alone by the, uh, of course, you're talking about a Malawi, a Lake Malawi catfish. And I'm not sure if a blackfin could, could, uh, could thrive in the water parameters of an African cichlid, really hard water. But um, that's a good size. That's a good, that's a good size cat. Uh, just don't add uh, him with Oscars. You'll have a $24 meal. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. You drop them in, they'll be thinking, wow, that's the biggest blood worm I've ever seen. <laughs> Where should I start, on the tail or the head? Sean says to get a freshwater eel. I haven't seen those. I'd sure like to look at them. Look at one. Paul says, don't care for the rope fish. Looks too much like a snake. <laughs> Yeah, some people don't like snakes. When my kids were younger, I owned, we owned a snake. All right. Let's take a look what you have to say here in, in the chat. Let me answer some of your questions. Let's go ahead and open this up to uh, comments and questions. I'm going to go onto the, uh, onto the chat screen. Let's see what you folks are talking about. Here's your chance to, uh, let me see. Scott says to get a striped Raphael. You know, Raphael cats are cool. Raphael cats are cool. How big do they get? You know how big the Raphaels get? They really are pretty. Really, really are pretty. Whips world in the house. All right. Let's get tanked. <laughs> It's five o'clock somewhere, right? Hey, Whiskey in the Six, I was just talking about you uh, the other day to my son, and uh, who is a whiskey aficionado. He has subscribed to your channel, by the way. And uh, so if you see a, a, a Jason O-chart, that, that's, uh, that's my son. And uh, we were talking about how we were, I still think about doing a, a collaboration with you, but I, I'd be drinking uh, screwballs. So I'd be drinking a, a, a peanut butter whiskey. So just to, just to upset everybody who watches your chat. <laughs> oh, okay. So whip throw, six to eight inches. Okay, not bad. That's not bad. And I have a, I, a biter. This is Jaeger. I have a biter. Uh, check those guys out. Yeah, no, I heard those are the bitchers. I heard those are the cousins of the rope fish. That, are, that they're in the same family as the rope fish. And I like the bitchers. They they have that uh, that sort of prehistoric look to them. You know, they look like a dinosaur. Very very cool cool looking guys. And so, um, 
Let's see here. X X Kali Kev. <laughs> Love that name. <laughs> Had a fire eel a long time ago. Was probably twelve inches. Really great colors. A fire eel. That sounds that sounds really pretty. I'll have to check one of those out. Striped Raphaels. Yeah, Raphaels are nice. Those big upside down cats are nice. Uh, Daniel, I hear that from a lot of people. Daniel Macon saying you seem to have a better selection of African cichlids in the U.S. than in the U.K. I'm not sure why that is. But um, even when I went to that wonderful store in Ireland, the, um, the, aquatic, the seahorse aquarium store, there, they had a bit of a limited, you know, they had the usual stuff. They had, you know, the Venusas and, uh, you know, like common, uh, common African cichlids. So, uh, yeah, we have some wonderful breeders here in the U.S. And let's see. Whip Squirrel, I love peanut butter whiskey. Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> Vibes Aquatics comes in with a super chat. Thank you, Vibes. Ben, I messaged you on Instagram. Coffee and cichlids, African cichlids. Tank setup. I'll look for it. I'll look for your message. For those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, ben.o.cichlid on Instagram. I don't often check messages on Instagram and Facebook but um, I do get around to them. I do get around to them. And I'll look for it. I'll look for it, Vibes. OC, uh, what's that? Is that OC or QC? Aqu Aquaholic. Love that name. Aquaholic. <laughs> it's too late for coffee for me. Cichlids and beer. All right. I think it's about time we have another Cichlids, cichlids and Suds. Cichlids and Suds is my evening installment. And uh, maybe we'll do one of those in a few weeks, and I'll have a, I'll have a beer with you. Of course, it'll be like probably 2 a.m. your time. I want to grab something here and show it to you. This the the uh, the conversion over to the um, over to the planted tank. The hardest the hardest part of that whole project was uh, yeah. I'll show you. Just get back onto the main screen. This was the hardest part of the entire project. You know what this is? <laughs> this is that back piece. You know, I I, I pulled off the. Um, I had those um, those condensation type trays. They're inexpensive condensation covers that you can buy and put on top of aquariums. So it's a great way to cut cost and to cover your tank with something that is uh, inexpensive, very customizable. You know, you can cut it to any shape you want. But I said, you know, for this for this tank, I want to I want some glass tops. So I put some glass tops on it. They look great. On the 55, you buy two pieces, two different sections, so you can have one open, one closed. It's not all one piece. And uh, I really liked it. And it replaced the condensation tray. But on the back of it, you have this piece that slides on, on these Aquion glass tops. And I think they're, they're called them Versa, actually. Probably short for versatile. And man, oh man, trying to get this, this slid on, trying to get this little section here slid, slid on it was just a real bear. But I was able to get it done. Ended up putting some uh, food grade silicone, and uh, and just just muscling it down. But um, anyway, so that tank now has has glass lids as opposed to condensation trays, which is what I had on it before. And so it it just looks really really good. I think I'm going to get glass lids for the other 55 as well, and where I had the um, where I had the Bucachromis. Rhodesia yellow, who is continuing to behave. Here's the Fusco. I think there are some Fuscos available at the Cichlid Shack. This guy is just a... He's just... <laughs> he's just a beast. Uh, I will be adding, uh, eventually, to that uh, planted tank, I will be adding CO2. I do have a aquarium co-op uh, CO2 kit. You can see it here. 
is everything I need to get to get CO2 going. But I want to I want to study up a little bit and understand CO2 a little bit more before I get this going. But there's a diffuser, there's a CO2 regulator, and I mean it's the it's the whole kit for CO2. So I will be adding uh, a CO2 to that 55. Uh, but but I have to really under feel that I have my wits around it that I understand it. Uh, <clears throat> So let's see here, let me shrink this, and let's go back to some of your questions here. Whips World, has anyone done the tote tank thing for fry or new fish in quarantine? How did you heat them? I'm scared to put a heater in there for fear of melting through the plastic. Anyone, anyone, Bueller? Those totes are pretty heavy duty. If you're talking about like the black uh, totes I keep as storage totes here, that uh, they're pretty heavy duty. I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure um, what would happen, but you can also uh, set something up maybe near the, you know, maybe away from the, the plastic something that would hold it in place maybe um, some some rocks or something and then just lay the heater on top of that and so that it doesn't touch the plastic doesn't touch the, the rubber and uh, but I mean people drop heaters I mean people take long trips with a fish in a bucket and they'll put a heater in the bucket and they'll just let it you know flop around in there while they take a long drive somewhere if they have a fish that they're trying to take somewhere and want to keep the water warm. So, uh, anybody else? A Bueller? Bueller? If you haven't seen uh, Ferris, uh, uh, Bueller's Day Off, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you must watch that movie. All right, let's see. Walmart Clear Tote. Walmart Clear Totes? I don't know. Those are pretty thin. Those are pretty thin. They'd hold water fine, uh, but I'm not sure if I'd trust it with a heater. But um, unless that heater was was being supported uh, and resting on top of uh, maybe uh, you know some gravel, you could put maybe two pounds of gravel in there and rest the heater on top of the gravel. Uh, so there's different different ways you could insulate it. All right, let's see here. Do you know where in Daytona Aquashella will be? Well, maybe maybe one of the moderators can find that real quick. Uh, I'd have to leave. I'd have to leave. I mean, it'd probably take me a second just to just to bring it up. I've got to get my I've got to get my flights, and I've got to get my uh, my hotel and everything else set up. Aquashella, let's see here. Daytona, November 4th and 5th. Uh, tickets go on sale in 12 days. So are they telling us where? It says you're when the tickets go on sale, but it's not telling me where, like what hotel. I'm sure they'll be announcing it very, very quickly. At any rate, after the hotel is announced, I'll go ahead and uh, make my reservations. And this is where you folks come in, you know, with your, with your uh, Patreon support, your Super Chats. That's the kind of stuff that pays for my trips. I am a retiree. <laughs> And so a lot of this is based, everything I do really is based on the support that you folks provide. And it is very, very appreciated. And uh, yes, on Thursday, I did have a birthday. We had some great celebrations. My youngest daughter took me to a hockey game 
to dinner and a hockey game, if you can believe that. And I actually enjoyed that hockey game quite a bit. The Nashville um, Predators, we won 5-4. to four. It was a great, great match. I think I'm a hockey fan now. So, <clears throat> let's see here. Any, no, oh, no site announced yet. Okay, there you go. Not published. Yeah, that's going to be, um, well, I mean, it's November. We have a little, a little time to plan, but it would be nice to secure some inexpensive flights as soon as possible. And I think uh, it would be great to get with you folks down there in Florida. Whips World. Hockey is fantastic to watch in person. Yeah, we were high up, and, and it wasn't that bad because you could really see the ice and the action, and it is fast. It's low scoring, but, it, but unlike soccer, which is low scoring, it moves. I mean, we were, we were screaming and, and uh, just whooping it up and just having a great old time, so we really had a good time. So uh, one of my more fun, fun birthdays. So did somebody, did somebody guess my age? I think last week some of you were making some shots at my, uh, at what my age. Sailing Aquatics, 48. I love you, buddy. I love you. <laughs> oh. Any more guesses? Let's see who, who can guess. Who can guess? 48 is the first guess. I'm not saying. You're going to have to guess it. Also, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. Michael. Michael. Michael's in the ballpark. Michael is warm. ZZip says 64. Angelo, 67. Jerry, 67. You guys are warm. You guys are warm. Country young, what? Can, uh, country strong and free used to go to the Red Wings. Can 54. I'm just being flattered here. Gary. Gary Yuri gets it at 68. Thank you, Gary. You nailed it. And thank you to everybody who, who put me in the 50s <laughs> and 40s. <laughs> hey, Gary. Send me your mailing address, full name mailing address, to ben.o.cichlid. Tell me what kind of fish you have. I'm going to send you some Sarah fish food, some of the best fish food in the world. So go ahead and send me an email, will you? Ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. Good guess, my friend. Yes, I am 68 years old. 68 years young. How's that sound? All right. So, my friends, anything else you want to ask me before we end off? Robert says 82. Uh, will someone block Robert Egan, please? Be sure to block him. And <laughs> Just kidding. Let Robert hang around. He's a good guy. So, uh, anybody else have a question for me before we go ahead and wrap up today's stream? And... Uh, Sailing Aquatics says extreme food is way... Extreme is awesome food. It is awesome food. ZZip, Father Fish A. How old is Father Fish? I met Father Fish. He's got to be in his 80s, right? I think he's in his 80s. I'd imagine. Anyway. Peas and Haps Forever. We are thinking of going down to Nashville when my Winnipeg Jets are there to play the Predators. Very, very cool. You'll love, you'll love where the stadium is, you know, where the arena is. It's right at the top of where all the fun is in downtown Nashville. It's, and uh, lots of places to eat. It's just a great, great place. Uh, Daniel P., how long have you had your Rostratus? A couple years. Uh, I'd say about a year and a half. I got him when he was already uh, a decent size. Uh, maybe a little more color. He'll get a little more color, I think. But um, maybe a little more. We'll see. I mean, color is is a is a is an interesting 
is a is an interesting kind of combination uh, of, of factors. I mean, you have you have diet, you have water parameters, right? Right, water quality, those kind of factors. But and maybe it's with every fish, but I've certainly seen it very much so with cichlids is where that fish is in the pecking order uh where that fish uh, you know ranks and and uh, some people are surprised that so many of my fish actually have color at all because uh usually it's a it's a dominance game and so the subdominant fish will will be colored down they they it's almost like they want to look like a female it's like look i'm i'm no threat to you i don't worry about me I'm not gonna. I'm not competition, and uh, as you can see, I have no color. <laughs> and I've heard so many stories over the years of a person who pulls a dull fish out of a cichlid tank and puts them in, in another tank alone, and it just is beautiful. It just blossoms and gets all this wonderful color. Then they put them back, and he just colors right down again. So it really is a um, a variety of factors. You have the color of your substrate. The tank mates, nutrition, water quality, background color, lighting, all of those things have to do with, um, with the color of your fish. And I have several videos actually on color. On, um, you can check them out on how to get maximum color out of your fish. And certainly full spectrum lighting is, is important. Uh, high quality nutrition is vital. And the proper tank mates, and the you know, water movement. I mean, there's just a variety of factors. So, um, all right. Any other comments here? Let's see. So, someone says uh, salient says eighty plus. Is that uh, you're you're talking about uh, father fish? I'm thinking. I'm thinking because when I saw him in person, I saw him in person, and uh, I was thinking about eighty, and that was, and that was a couple of years ago when I saw him. So, uh, Saline says like a hundred. <laughs> I don't know. He usually shows up at Aquachella. I think I'll just I'll just come right out and ask him. But he's a good guy. He uh, released a recent video. I think was a little bit. Uh, I think talking about the cycle, uh, cycling a tank, and uh, some interesting stuff. He's got some very interesting. He he's into like you know, the 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 you know the the more uh, the deeper substrates using substrate as a beneficial bacteria as a home for your beneficial bacteria, and not messing with the substrate. That way you don't mess with your beneficial bacteria, and using deep substrates, you know between you know, three and, you know, between three and six inches of substrate and then lightly vacuuming the surface so you never really mess with it. So you have this, this real um, healthy, established, uh, you know, bacteria colony. All right, let's see here. Thank you, Daniel P. My pleasure. And Billy D. Billy D, you're 69. Hey, man, it's the, it's the new uh, it's the new 40. <laughs> That's what I keep telling myself, especially when I'm getting out of bed in the morning. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's the new 40. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, my friends. So, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, sitting in. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And I hope you enjoyed the video of, of, the, of, the, of the walkthrough and also the, uh, the reveal, the big reveal. Watch for a detailed video on the steps that were taken to create that planted tank. Big thank you to all of my moderators, to all of you subscribers, to my Patreons, to the Cichlid Shack for these beautiful beasts. And also, of course, to um, Aquarium Co-op for their help on the planted tank. Uh, you folks are the best. I appreciate you very much. I will see you this coming Saturday. Watch for a couple videos. I'll probably even, I'll probably even release that little exotic 
uh, video on the on the stingrays. So I'll probably release that one as well. So you folks got a preview of upcoming upcoming stuff, and uh, which you deserve. You are my. Uh, we're all we're all like the family here, the uh, the garage gang. All right, my friends. So that being said, thank you so much, and I will see you folks next Saturday, same time. Until then, bye-bye. You folks are still here? What's going on? That's a, a little throwback to uh, Ferris Bueller. Remember the end of that movie? You're still here? Come on, go home. There's a whole world out there. <laughs> All right, my friends. I'll see. I'll I'll see you later. Let me see if I can find the uh, the end screen. Here it is. Bye bye.